Meghan Markle and Prince Harry announcing their engagement has gotten our hearts all aflutter, but Meghan isn't the first American to become royalty. Now that Meghan is joining Britain's royal family, she's leaving USA Network show Suits. How do you think the rest of the cast feels about that? Stay tuned to find out what her co-stars and director think about being ditched for a prince. New around here? Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. Now, on to five times Americans have become royalty. Wallace Simpson Becoming royalty is something most little girls dream of. We play dress-up and read stories about princesses and watch Cinderella, all in the hopes that someday our prince will come and we too will be royalty. Well, for Wallace Simpson, that dream came true. Wallace was born on June 19, 1896 as Bessie Wallace Warfield in Blue Ridge Summit, Pennsylvania. She was the daughter of Tickle Wallace Warfield and Alice Montag. She dropped her first name as a child. When she was still a baby, her father passed away because of tuberculosis. Wallace then lived off the charity of her wealthy uncle, Solomon Davies Warfield. He paid for her to attend Oldfield School, which was the most expensive girls' school in Maryland. In 1931, Wallace met Thelma, Lady Furness, who was the then mistress of Edward. Edward was the oldest son of King George V and Queen Mary and the heir to the British throne. In 1934, while Lady Furness was away, Wallace became Edward's mistress. Edward initially denied it, but eventually he fell in love with Wallace. In 1935, she was presented at court. George V. died in 1936 and Edward took the throne, but he planned to marry Wallace as soon as she divorced her first husband. This caused what is well known as the abdication crisis scandal in England. The Church of England said that Edward could not marry a divorced woman who still had two living husbands. Many British people were also reluctant to accept an American queen. Edward eventually decided to give up the throne. In 1936, he went on BBC broadcast and said that he could not do his job as king without the support of the one woman that he loved. Once Wallace's divorce went through, she married Edward and became the Duchess of Windsor. The whole story was a true fight for love. Christopher O'Neill Being royal is probably not something that most men dream of, but the power and wealth that comes along with it can't be half bad. In 2011, photos started surfacing that suggested that Christopher O'Neill was dating Princess Madeline of Sweden. He was a financial advisor at the time and had been commonly spotted with the princess outside of his home in East Village. O'Neill earned a degree from Columbia and was working in the finance field for quite some time. He also attended the Institute of dem Rosenberg, which is a prestigious private school in Switzerland. Previously, the princess was engaged to lawyer Jonas Bergstrom, who she had dated for eight years. Sadly, they called off the wedding after reports came out that he cheated on her with a 21-year-old handball player from Norway. After the embarrassment of that incident, she left Sweden for New York and that is where she began her relationship with Christopher. On October 25, 2012, it was announced that Princess Madeline and Christopher were engaged. Since they have been married, people in the Swedish government and the general public have been upset that Christopher Christopher doesn't attend many royal engagements. In response to that, Christopher had a few things to say. I have to look after my family and put food on the table, he told Swedish publication Expressen. My job doesn't allow me to decide if I can attend an official engagement once a month before it happens. He continued to defend himself. I have my business and I work hard for it, and sometimes a client meeting conflicts with a royal engagement, he said. The couple has two children, Princess Leonore, Duchess of Gotland, and Prince Nicholas, Duke of Angermanland and are expecting their third. We always planned on moving to London, but then the baby was born and we thought it would be a good idea to stay in Stockholm for a bit," Chris said after the birth of his son. I don't want to be alone in my hotel room every night. I want to go home to my family and have dinner together. Nothing else matters more. They have since moved to London so that Christopher can work and they can all be together. Lisa Halaby Lisa Najib Halaby was born on August 23, 1951 in Washington, D.C. Her father was of Syrian descent and was a U.S. Navy test pilot. He was also a lawyer who later became the head of the Federal Aviation Administration for John F. Kennedy. To add to his impressive resume, he was also the CEO of Pan American World Airways. Needless to say, the family was very well off. As a child, Lisa attended very prestigious private schools like the National Cathedral School in Washington, D.C., the Chapin School in New York City, City and Concord Academy in Massachusetts. She went on to be part of the first co-ed class at Princeton University in 1969. After she graduated in 1973, she worked for an architectural company in Australia. She was eventually offered a job with Howell and Davies, which would send her to Tehran to replan the city. She returned to the U.S. in 1976, where her father had just accepted an offer from the Jordanian government to help redesign their airlines. He offered Lisa a job to work with him, and she became the director of facilities 
activities planning and design for the airline. While in Jordan, Lisa went to lots of events with very affluent people. While at the opening of the Queen Alia International Airport, she met King Hussein. At the time, he was still grieving over the loss of his third wife who tragically passed away in a helicopter crash, but Lisa still caught his eye. They became fast friends. A year later, that friendship had grown into a romance. We courted on a motorcycle, Lisa told Vanity Fair. It was the only way we could get off by ourselves. The king proposed to Lisa on May 13, 1978 after only six weeks of courting. On June 15, 1978, Lisa became the first American queen of an Arab country. She took on the name of Noor al-Hussein, which means the light of Hussein. They were married in a traditional Islamic ceremony at the Zaren Palace. Initially, the people of Jordan were unhappy about having an American queen, but they eventually grew to like her. Over time, she has shown that she has a great interest in Jordan and has converted to Islam. But being queen did not come without great responsibility. She had to take over managing the royal household and raise Hussein's three children from his former marriage. She also was given several bodyguards because her husband has survived over 25 assassination attempts. Despite all of this, Lisa still seems truly happy in her new role. Grace Kelly You may recognize the name Grace Kelly as being one of the most famous movie stars of all time, but did you know that she was also a princess? Grace Patricia Kelly was born on November 12, 1929 in Philadelphia. Her father, Brendan, was a three-time Olympic gold medalist rower. He was also a millionaire who owned a brick business. Grace was one of four children. The actress began to love performing at a very young age. She participated in lots of school plays and community productions. She also modeled with her mom and sister. After high school, she moved to New York City to chase her dream, but her parents were not pleased about her decision at all. She went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and modeled part-time. During this time, she appeared on the covers of some prominent magazines like Cosmopolitan and Red Book. Eventually, it was Gary Cooper that discovered Grace on the set of her first film, 14 Hours. He gave her another role in High Noon. Later, she was in Mogambo, which earned her a nomination for an Academy Award and a Golden Globe Award. In 1954, Grace got to play the role of Georgia Elgin in The Country Girl. Her performance won her an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress and she won the Oscar. So at this point, she had reached what some would say the pinnacle of her career. In 1955, she was asked to join the United States Delegation Committee at the Cannes Film Festival in France. It was there that she would meet Prince Rainier III of Monaco at a photo shoot. At the time, he was looking for a wife because if he didn't have an heir, Monaco would become a part of France. He courted Grace and they got married on April 19, 1956. Once she was married, she left her acting career behind and became the Princess of Monaco. Plenty of people in Hollywood tried to convince Grace to return to acting, but instead she focused on her duties as a princess. She had three children, Princess Caroline, Prince Albert, and Princess Stephanie. In 1982, Stephanie and Princess Grace were driving in the southern region of France when Grace had a stroke and lost control of the vehicle. It spun off the edge of a cliff and down a 45-foot embankment. The two were rushed to the hospital. Sadly, Grace passed away at the age of 52 and Princess Stephanie survived. Meghan Markle Now we've come to the last, but certainly not the least on our list, Meghan Markle. She has been constantly making headlines for her recent engagement to Prince Harry. But who was she before she began dating the red-haired prince? Born as Rachel Meghan Markle, the actress went to an all-girls private Catholic school in Los Angeles. In 1998, she had her first taste of being royal as she was crowned the homecoming queen at the age of 17 at her high school. She went to the dance with a boy from St. Francis High School. We bet he wishes that he would have held on to her. She broke into the acting industry by appearing on one episode of General Hospital in 2002, which was just a year before she graduated from Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois. After that, she had had tiny roles in Century City, The War at Home, CSI NY, and also appeared as a briefcase girl on Deal or No Deal. She dated her boyfriend Trevor Engelson for seven years before marrying him in 2011. By then, Meghan had begun acting in USA Suits, which began airing in 2011. This caused her and her first husband to have to have a long-distance marriage. She lived in Toronto and he lived in LA. The long distance proved to be too much and the two divorced shortly after. Meghan first met Prince Harry in Toronto in 2016 when he was launching the 2017 Invictus Games. At first, it seemed like the two would be just friends, and then they developed romantic interest and were texting daily. By the end of the month, Meghan was following Harry's private Instagram account. They started out quite slowly and went
went on a few dates at Soho House in London with groups of friends. She soon became a regular visitor at Kensington Palace. After Meghan and Prince Harry announced that they were getting married in November of 2017, it was confirmed that she would be leaving Suits to move to the UK and live with Harry and focus on her new duties. Her Suits co-star and director wished her the best of luck and everyone seems to be completely thrilled for the couple. We don't know about you, but we can't wait to watch their wedding. That's it for 5 Times Americans Have Become Royalty. Which story was your favorite? Let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.